Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever's trailer leaves us with the mystery of who is in this new vibranium suit. Let's hope the memes are wrong and it's not Ryan Gosling. I mean, nothing against our future Ken doll, but you know, it's just our hearts are broken enough. One major overlooked detail hidden in this suit's design actually opens up a whole new possibility. I actually found five new things now that this IMAX trailer is here with parts of it in wider aspect ratio and all of it in sharper 4K detail. So let's break down all the new stuff. Of course, the trailer ends with the reveal of this mystery figure in the suit and Kendrick Lamar is all right, cutting the black on and when I wake up. The theory I posed in the trailer breakdown, which you should watch if you haven't already, is that this could be a clue pointing to this being a resurrected character like Killmonger, who was buried at sea at the end of the 2018 film and might therefore tie in with the Ocean Dwellers who are opposed to the Wakandas in this film. We actually just learned that the name of their home is not Atlantis in this movie, but Tlalocan, inspired by the paradise from Aztec mythology. Namor and his people draw from both Mayan and Aztec influences, similar to how for the 2018 film, Ryan Coogler's team drew influences from across the African continent to create the fictional Wakanda mythology. Actually, one detail that we didn't mention from Namor's birth shot, this baby has wings on his feet, the same that Namor has in the comics. But getting back to that detail of who is in the suit, in the trailer, Angela Bassett as Queen Ramonda declares, I am queen to the most powerful nation in the world and my entire family is gone. Have I not given everything? And since she says my entire family, that tells us Shuri is either missing or or presumed dead, which I interpret as a strong indicator that Shuri might go into the ancestral plane in search of backup. And assuming that T'Challa's death of natural causes, we think, might lead his panther spirit to be unable or unwilling to return to this realm and force Shuri to seek her more eager cousin Killmonger's assistance. But as Doctor Strange saw when he resurrected the dead, this might be a mistake that the living pay a brutal cost for as Killmonger escalates his conflict with a scorched earth strategy or rather we should say a flooded earth. But a huge detail is hidden in this mystery suit's design. We've been so focused on the shape of this silhouette and comparing it to the various actors' physiques, but on the gauntlet, there is an open mouth of a panther, its fangs jutting into the forearm. These may remind you of the panther head gauntlets that Shuri wields in the final battle of the 2018 film, which fire concussive blasts that retracted Killmonger's vibranium. So at the very least, this design detail suggests that Shuri designed this suit, which does make sense. She is the designer behind all the sleek tech that we see, from the more subtler suit that T'Challa chose to the more pronounced golden suit that Killmonger chose. Really, this final trailer shot has invited us to consider all possibilities, from Killmonger to Shuri herself, to the theory that this could be Ramonda, either a flashback to a past conflict with Namor's people, perhaps the origin of the bad blood between the kingdoms, or hell, maybe even the present day. I mean, based off of this trailer, Angela Bassett has some fighting spirit. But another detail we should point out is the object beside Ramonda on the armrest of the throne earlier in the trailer, which I speculated could be made of vibranium. This now looks like it is in the shape of a conch shell. I think it'd be sick to have a conch shell made of vibranium to represent these two kingdoms being the only sources of vibranium on the planet. This could have been sent to Wakanda as a warning or a ransom note, or perhaps a totem representing a past truce between the kingdoms. Maybe a means of communication between the kingdoms, like the red phone in the Oval Office with the direct line to the Kremlin. Don't tell me a conch shell can't be a telephone. When you put them to your ear, you hear the ocean, and it's because Namor wants to talk. When you rewatch this trailer, it is just impossible to ignore the signs that Nakia might be playing a bigger role than it seems. Lupita Nyong'o was the first member of the cast introduced by director Ryan Googler at Comic-Con. After he reflected back on being Hall H in 2017 to introduce the first Black Panther, he talked about how the late Chadwick Boseman was positioned directly to his left and how Chadwick opened his hand to place it on his shoulder. And this trailer ends with a new Black Panther figure opening their hand and now on that Hall H panel, who was to the left of Ryan Coogler? Lupita Nyong'o. And the trailer opens with, of all characters, Nakia, who only appears once more right around the midpoint and then the trailer bookends with the mystery figure. I know it seems like I'm obsessing too much about the editing of this trailer, but I'm only doing so because the Disney editor who actually cut this, Andrew Hegley, guested on Batman Beyond with Kevin Smith and Mark Bernard and Kevin Smith, my hero, blew my freaking mind by shouting us out. I think they do some pretty good deep dive video work, man. A guy, Eric Voss, very entertaining. Plug, plug for the new rock stars. Holy shit, thank you, my man. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of everything you do. And for everyone watching, I highly recommend you watch their full episode because it's just super insightful and entertaining, especially because this trailer editor specifically went into his approach with cutting trailers to music. And he talked about how the Thames cover of No Woman, No Cry and Kendrick Lamar's All Right form a dialogue and how those opening and closing statements were totally intentional. Where is music in it for you? Is that the first thought or later on? 
It, it is the beginning and end, it is everything. Now, Hegley has cut the initial teaser trailers for Shang-Chi, for Eternals, for Star Wars Andor, and The Mandalorian. And he said he thinks of these as dreams. I like to, I like to think of uh, uh, trailers as the, especially teaser trailers, which are more mood building. The If you watched a movie and then you fell asleep and you had a dream about it, the trailer is the dream you had. And uh, I feel like that captures like, and again, it all starts with, in this particular case, it starts with Ryan and then Ludwig figuring out that song, No Woman to Cry. So if you see a connection between this trailer opening with Nakia and then fading black on Nakia, and then all this imagery in between being edited as a dream, and then ending with a mystery figure cutting to black on the words, and when I wake up, yeah, there might be something there. Now, if this interpretive poetry analysis isn't enough for you, the visual evidence does support this interpretation, folks. I pointed out that shot of the Wakanda necropolis that Ramonda and Shuri are approaching in that funeral march. A march, by the way, that if you look closely at that overhead shot, Shuri is carrying T'Challa's Black Panther helmet there. I know, I know, just more and more reasons to cry here. But that gate shows Bashenga with Bast. But then to the right, there is a female companion with another feline that I think might be Sekhmet, the other feline deity that T'Challa mentioned in Civil War. In my culture, death is not the end. It's more of a stepping off point. You reach out with both hands and bust and Sekhmet. They lead you into the green veld where you can run forever. Now think about it, would this shrine include a statue of Bashenga's mother or sister or his spouse? If it's his spouse, that would set up Nakia to be the heir to the mantle. So I'll leave it to you to decide the silhouette of this mystery figure. Honestly, it feels pretty weird to talk about how good of shape all these actors are in. I mean, you could say that the curves might look more masculine from this angle, but its arms might look thinner than what we remember Michael B. Jordan looking like in the 2018 film. You could say that the arms roughly match the width of Nakia's arms from the opening shot, though Lupi Nyong'o is wearing a costume there, so it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, these suits are often worn by stunt actors or just all of it vfx anyway. To me, the more important clue is how the suit assembles. Shuri designed them to be contained within a necklace or some other article of jewelry that the wearer can walk around in. By the way, I don't I don't know how T'Challa or Tony Stark would walk around with their entire suits contained within a small apparatus. I mean, those necklaces would be heavy as shit. But whatever, it's a movie. Remember, T'Challa's suit had silver trimming and was encased within a silver-colored vibranium necklace. So if this suit has gold trimming, we probably should look for someone wearing gold jewelry. And yes, lots of characters wear golden jewelry, Ramonda, Namor, but there is this one shot showing Shuri sobbing as she is held by another female figure who wears a golden bracelet on her right hand. Again, the right-handed mystery figure is what the trailer cuts to black on. We do see Shuri early in the trailer doing the handshake with Riri Williams wearing the same golden bracelet. I think she designed this bracelet, wore it initially, and then handed it off to someone else. And in this shot of her crying, I am pretty sure that is the arm of Nakia. And in the opening opening shot of this trailer on the beach, you can barely make out a faint glimmer of gold reflecting off of Nakia's wrist. I don't know, Nakia being in the suit here does not rule out the possibility of Killmonger still getting resurrected from the ancestral plane in this movie. Both could still be possible. And in fact, we might just see several characters in Black Panther suits in this movie. Let me know who you think this is based on this new evidence. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars, subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching, bye.